Haley and I are here and today we're going to do a tutorial on Sony Vegas video editor and uh, she's going to learn today and we're going to learn on YouTube as well so let's get started okay Haley I'm looking at the screen here and um, one thing I would like to cover first is you know for people that are just watching us if we uh, go here to um, I'm going to search for Sony Vegas family and overview and so when we search that we come up with this window here and we have it Vegas product family overview and we click there and so if you need Sony Vegas and you don't have it installed on your computer we'll bring it up here and you see it has all the various types of Sony Vegas the simple ones up to the complex ones the one I'm using is Vegas Pro 10 but every one of these has download a free trial on all versions and so you can get Vegas from as low as 49.95 all the way up to 599 and also you can get DVD Architect which allows you to make DVDs after you've edited your video in Vegas that said let's go ahead and start do, start editing so what I will do is I'll open up Vegas so here's our, our Vegas GUI and you'll see it has several things on it basically it has file edit view insert all these uh, buttons up here at the top then you have some fast keys which we'll go over you have your waveform monitor and you can actually uh, I would pick like two of them waveform monitor and vector scope you have your timeline and this is also part of your timeline over here now what I would do is when I get my SDHC chip out of the camera I would plug it into my computer and what I do to organize is I, I just make a new file our new folder and I would do the date if you always do the date you know you know you're organized automatically and so I would just pick um, let's see today is April so it's 4 and then 25 and then 2015 so that I've made the folder for today's date that's gonna be our working folder and so we can put all our files in it so when I upload my files from um, I want to get an SCHC card here out of a camera well of course I can't get this one probably just got a plate on it so let me find one let's just say okay here's a box with SDHC cards from cameras thank God I can edit this huh <laughs> so I'm going to take my SDHC card from my camera and load it up into my computer you'll get this window that will appear and so I'll open it to look in inside and you'll find it has a private folder then an AVCHD folder, then a BDMV folder, then you go to stream. And what you'll do is you'll have a you'll have a file, a video file in your stream folder. And I just take that file and I drag it over to my editing folder for the day. It will copy that over to the editing folder and then all your shoots for that individual day will be in that folder. And then if you have multiple cameras you have to sync the audio so it's good to have it all organized okay it's taking a little time to come over I also have some more files over here that I'm going to move this up into my working folder so I can have all the files I need to do this training and have it uh, where we have plenty of files to edit with and you can see it's still copying over and so it's almost done Okay, so 
that said, once I get, and feel free to ask me if you, any questions if you're curious about anything so that I can uh, be sure and cover it for you. Okay, so I'm going to then go File, Import, Media, and then I will go to my desktop and I will go to the folder that I made and um, I will pick a video and you'll see we have all these individual icons for various videos and so I want to know you know which would be the best and I'm looking at um, looking for one that would be the, the best one to use I want something longer and so I've got one and I'm not sure so to make sure what I want to do is close this minimize Vegas then open up the files in the folder open up these files and I ask it to search by or look at it by details and then I will go over here and click on size and that shows me the biggest files number 19 is the biggest file and that's the one I want to use for this tutorial it's a video of Rob when we were at NAB and he was learning to use a steady cam and so I'm opening that back up and I'll go here to file import media and then desktop and then our folder and our subfolder then we're going to go here to 19 and then that brings it into this window here I'm going to then take and drag this well I can do two things here I can right mouse click and I can open in trimmer okay so I have a trimmer and I'll bring my trimmer over where you can see it and so we've got our main window and our trimmer okay so if we we have our trimmer here and the purpose of a trimmer in Sony Vegas is to allow you to cut your clip before you bring it to the timeline okay and so I want to play it now I would I was going to say here that I want to I want to pick the first spot when I see Robbie well I can go here and hit my arrow to the right button and I will go here to where I see them suiting up Robbie okay I will hit an I for in and then I will go forward some uh, to where they're actually you know we, we got to this point here where he's going sideways I want to hit an O for out and that has established that portion of that clip that I want to use okay and so then I would take this and drag it down to the timeline okay we had this big long clip here now we have a little sub clip and I start my playhead at the very beginning and lots of times I like to move it over to the right and then start my playhead where I have some room over here to work and so when we play through what I just brought down with just that little clip that we wanted to have for this function for this purpose and this this type of um, of editing you know bringing in on a trimmer or preview monitor if you're using other editors is so that if you're doing like a documentary or a shots of people talking back and forth but they're not related you're just going from one shot to another using trimmer to do that is a lot easier you can just drag it all down to the timeline and edit on the timeline but depending on what you're doing trimmer is real useful now if I'm doing a multiple camera shoot and I have four cameras and I have to sync them and I have to switch back and forth from camera to camera and have all the audio sync then I wouldn't be using trimmer so that I just wanted to show you trimmer and that's that's pretty much the same for all editing systems you know Avid and uh, all the other ones do it basically this way uh, Final Cut Pro generally forces you to go into trimmer and you can't really do multi cameras easily with the Final Cut 10 Adobe Premiere is uh, very similar to Avid and you can then take it into a preview 
window, pick a sub clip and bring it down. That said, I want to go ahead and delete this from the timeline and just drag my whole clip to the timeline. And so what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to just do some basic functions here and we're going to show you and then I'm going to sit with you while you do the same thing. Now normally I'd have this big screen here all the way over on my other monitor where we can see it full screen but since we're recording it for this tutorial I'm using a small screen. But if you ever want to make your screen bigger you can always adjust your size. There's our trimmer and it looks it looks a little bigger where you can see what's going on. And I can bring this over and I get a little bit better screen size. Now let's just say I want to do a video about Rob learning how to how to use a steady cam. And so just to illustrate this, I would come over here and I would write my, now this is the video track and this is the audio track. I can add more. Like I go up here to insert and I go video track. And so now we have a video track. I can go insert and I want an audio track. So now what I have is I have an audio track, an audio track, a video track, and then above it another video track. I can have up to you know as many as I need. I could do 20, 30 tracks. If you go over 10 tracks, you have to have a very powerful computer. And really, you know, if you go up to 10 tracks, I'm going to ask you why you need to do that in the first place. And so, but let's just say I want to I want to insert a text message. I will write in, inside the video track where the playhead is and if you if you move up here at the top that's scrub or you can go down here and you can move it real fast scrub is so you can hear the audio like see I can move real fast up here or down, down here on the track if I do this I'm scrubbing through so I grabbed up here with the mouse if I grab down here it just moves the playhead so I'll come here and in the video track I'll right mouse click and I'll go insert text media okay and you'll see I have media here you can see it up here and I will I will then say in my text editor I will pick the size of my font I want to say let's say 28 and then I'll type over this Rob that, you got to watch that sometimes. Go down here, 28. Back up. Rob learns. Yep. Okay. Want to make? You always have to be very sure about your spelling. You get busy editing, you mess up the spelling. Steady cam. Okay. So he's learning steady cam. And I'm thinking, well, do I like that font really? Well, it's Arial. And so I can go up here and I could pick any one of the fonts I want, you know, to use. And you try and pick one that, that's sort of flattering. Um, there's some of them that aren't very flattering, so you just have to pick what you think looks best. Um, I'll, I'll pick this one called Deja Vu Sharif. Sharif and then I have that there and then what I'll do is I'll go over here to placement and placement determines where it's going to be on the screen and then properties gives you your text color and your background color as long as the background color is black then you can see everything below it and then but you can make the background another color and just have a colored background so we'll look at that um, I'm going to pick the colors that I think would be good I want to go here with a lighter tan just a, something like that and I'll go back here looking at the screen that's smaller so I'm going to edit it and I'm going to go to size 36 and then I'm back here in my properties now I want a background, so let's just say that we get a blue background, okay? And it's that's that's a shocking blue. We'll go with this one, okay? Now you see the lettering there? Uh, it looks okay, but you want it to look more professional. Come over here to effects. That gives me. I could either 
put a line out around the entire letter or I can do a drop shadow next to the letter. So let's just say I'm going to go with black but I can pick any color right but I'm going to go with black I want to do a drop shadow and then what I do is I'm looking at this and I'm seeing that the drop shadows not as uh, uh, it's too big and so I want to reduce this number from experience to 101 or 001 and I take the other one to go again 001 and that makes it just a little bitty drop shadow on the right hand side of the letter and I know you're, you're, you're sort of going, oh gosh, am I going to remember all this? But we're going to do the exact same thing with you as soon as I move over in that chair. Um, so that's what we, we're doing. I could pick another color. I could pick an, out, an outline. I could uh, deform it in some way with a shear. Okay, but I'm not. I'm just going to leave it like that. Rob learned Steadicam. And I'm wondering if I should make Steadicam two words. I'm just going to play it safe and do that. Okay. Now, once I've once I've done that, now I want to I want to look in close on my timeline and see what I've got here. Okay. So I'm going to put my playhead there, and I'm going to hit this plus button here, and I'm expanding the size. Now, what I'm going to do is start playing it. I want to see how long this actually is. And you see, it, it's, it's way too long. I, st I stretch it out to just give you a point. So I'm going to take it down to this one. one see that little marks here? These marks are about the set, st standard size for um, a text message. So I'm going to go back to test message, text message standard length and I'm going to bring it up here to the beginning of our video and I'm going to then see I'm grabbing the top corner and it's at that little semicircle there that is the adjustable fade I, I have all kinds of, of, of effects over here I can use that I can I can do fade, fade just by moving them in but I can always in Vegas I can always grab the corner and and adjust the fade in and fade out or I can just grab the side to adjust the length and you know this is one thing about Vegas that gives you so much more power you can just grab the clip and drag it around size it adjust your fade right here so now that I've got that there what I want to do is I'm going to start there and I'm going to hit play which is a space bar and see how it faded in now it's going to fade out See? That made a fade in, fade out little color slide, you know, that introduces the video. Now, what I want to do next is I want to start with Rob. And so here's a guy here, and he's not Rob, and he's really not really getting a good shot. So I'm going to start here when they're suiting up Rob. And I just press in the arrow button. You can go forwards, backwards, and you can you can either you, up and down arrow is size. You know the the uh, the time, size of your time domain on your timeline. Up and down, right and left takes you right and left. So I'm going forward in time now, and we're going. To, okay, do you see right here? That's where they they you see Rob first suiting up. Unfortunately. I'm moving the camera, the camera's moving so it's not a good shot. So I'm going to go forward until the camera gets still enough to have a decent picture. And so we're going to say this is it right here. Okay. Now, when I do that, I hit the S button. S stands for split. Okay. So when I split the clip, I highlight the one I don't want and hit cut and then we'll go here and then I will fade in my video and fade in my audio okay so now we're starting over here we're gonna look at that <clears throat> again you see I just that I thought that might have been a good start
I thought that might have been a good starting point, but it's not. So what I want to do here, see I'm moving this over. I can grab my clip and I can just scroll to the right until I get something usable. About Rob, see there's guys in the way there. And so I'm going to bring this over some more. And I'm going to go until, okay, so right here we have, we have what looks like a good shot. Right there. So, now, just to show you something, just to show you something you can do, okay, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to see this little button here that looks like a padlock mm -hmm. that disconnects the audio and video clip so I can work with them independently that's a very important thing so now that I've gone off of, I, I've disconnected them I will then come and bring my clip like over here and I will then highlight highlight the video clip right I, I'll, I'll just do it right here okay and then I will hit S for split the clip okay so now I've isolated this one little clip at the beginning the reason I want to isolate it is I thought it was way too unsteady so now I'm going to instruct Vegas to steady the video around a certain point so what I'm going to do is right mouse clip on uh, right mouse uh, click on the video and I'm going to go to stabilize media and it, it, if, you, if you click yes here it will stabilize everything I'm just wanting to stabilize this little sub subsection to demonstrate and so I'll go no I just want to stabilize this one little sub clip and so I've got that there and it, it has some base settings and I'm doing this to show you how to stabilize media and so I'm going to hit apply and what it's going to do is it's going to detect the motion in the video and stabilize it as best as it can so it's stabilizing that it's going to take a few minutes okay now what it did is this right here is stabilized and this clip here is not stabilized so let's take a look at that and see what that does as far as stabilizing See, he's a lot more stable there. So I hit the wrong button, so we're going to do that again. I want to show you something. I want to undo the stabilize. I'm going to undo the split. And so you have levels of undo. You can you, you mess up. You can undo. You can undo. You can undo back to where you were good. And what you want to do is constantly go up here and say file save okay and I'm gonna just pick it I'm gonna call it H for Haley and I'm gonna save it and so now I've just saved everything I've done so if you have a power hit something goes wrong you saved everything you've done let's say you want to get experimental and you want to save a copy that is a certain point and if you mess up down the road you can always go back to this point you then we go to file save as and your save as would be the one that you're working with from now on but the one you saved before wouldn't be touched so you give it a different name of course okay so now I'm going to come over here and see we're, we're only doing the video clip and I'm going to hit split the S button and I could also you know click up here and, and go edit and there's a split function up here.